I recently found out that if you say the following three words, you can get a free repair, a free replacement, or even a full refund, even after your warranty or Apple Care coverage has expired. The only problem is that Apple doesn't want you to know about this. So get us snacks ready, uh, because this might just be one of the most useful videos we've ever made. Okay, so no matter where you buy a product from, it will always come with a manufacturer warranty. For most manufacturers, this is one year from the moment you bought the product. Which means that if that product breaks within that year at no fault of the user, the manufacturer has to give the user a free repair, a free replacement, or even a full refund. Some manufacturers do offer extended warranty programs where if you pay extra, they would extend the warranty from that one year uh, to two or even more. Apple has this as well with Apple Care, where if you pay $250 in the case of an M1 MacBook Pro, you would get three years of warranty plus two incidents of accidental damage every 12 months. This sounds like a pretty good deal, but when you consider that the MacBook Pro already costs $1,300, you probably would want to avoid paying another $250 on top of that. Not only that, but even if you buy a $50,000 Mac Pro, a computer that should last you for something like 5 to 10 years, you would still only get a one-year warranty. If you want three years, you'll need to pay another $300 to get that. But there is a way around all of this, and that way is something called consumer law rights. The way it works is that instead of claiming a repair or replacement under the warranty, you would claim it under your consumer law rights. And I'm going to give you a personal example. So a few months ago, I've noticed that my iPad Pro's battery life was really, really bad. Like, I could be on a FaceTime call for like 10 minutes and the battery would draw by more than 20%. In some cases, I could even watch the percentages drop in real time. So I was pretty sure that my battery was the issue. And this was a 2018 iPad Pro, which I've had since early 2019. So I got in touch with Apple and asked for a battery replacement, which would have cost me a hundred pounds here in the UK outside of the warranty. And I was okay with that. Apple wanted to do some remote tests first, after which they told me that the battery was actually fine and that the issue might be software related instead. So I updated to iOS 14.6, I even restored my iPad, but the issue still persisted. However, I noticed that the severe battery drain issue was only happening when I had my Magic Keyboard connected. And that was when I remembered how when the Magic Keyboard came out back in March 2020, quite a lot of users were reporting severe battery drain issues, which only got fixed by the users requesting Magic Keyboard replacement units from Apple. There were so many reports on this, and it turns out that the very first batch of the Magic Keyboard uh, was faulty. Something wrong with maybe the power controller, I'm not fully sure. Uh, but whatever it was, it resulted in the keyboard using way too much power than it should have. I got my keyboard in April as soon as it was in stock, and I remember having some battery drain issues as well, but nothing as severe as I was having now. So. I just didn't bother getting in touch with Apple and having the whole keyboard replaced. Also, about three weeks after I got my iPad Pro Magic Keyboard, I bought my 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro, which itself had a brand new keyboard. So I ended up using that and kind of forgot entirely about the iPad Pro. But recently, when I started testing the 12.9-inch M1 iPad Pro, video on that here, by the way, I started using my 11 inch again, and this was when I noticed that the battery issue was not only still present, but it was also way worse than it's ever been. So both myself and Apple came to the conclusion that the keyboard was the problem here, and I agreed to take it in for a repair. However, Apple said that because the Magic Keyboard was an iPad Pro accessory, it would have to be treated as an out of warranty iPad Pro repair, for which I would be charged 456 pounds. Fun fact, a brand new Magic Keyboard is 300 pounds. So that was when I remembered that there was this thing called consumer law rights. I decided to look into it more and I found out that Apple even has a full page on this detailing how it works. The way it works is that your consumer law rights act in addition to your warranty and Apple Care, and they do give you the right to get a free repair, a free replacement, or even a full refund for up to six years 
from when you originally bought the product. So I then asked Apple about this and they said that yes, I could actually claim a free repair under my consumer law rights and that I would not be charged anything for that. So I went to the Apple store and I'm not even kidding, within five minutes, the Genius Bar saw my case, they saw that I was claiming a free repair under the consumer law rights and they gave me a free replacement, so essentially a brand new Magic Keyboard without me having to pay anything for it, even though it was technically outside of warranty and I did not have Apple Care for it. And that only happened because I specifically said consumer law rights when requesting a repair. If I hadn't mentioned consumer law rights, Apple would have treated this as an out of warranty repair. I looked into this more and I found that quite a number of people had similar stories where they had a faulty Apple product, they requested for it to be repaired under the consumer law rights, and they got a free repair or a free replacement outside of their warranty without having any Apple Care either. In fact, Dave from Geekonoids made a video about how he was having loads of issues with his MacBook Pro, popping noise issues and more, um, and that Apple just wouldn't fix his machine as they could not identify the issue. And when they finally did decide to fix it, they broke something else instead. He wanted a replacement, but Apple kept saying no. And in the end, he just invoked his consumer law rights and he was actually offered a full refund in return, which he gladly accepted. Which is quite funny because remember my 2018 MacBook Pro issues? I had to make a video on that just because I was actually in a very similar situation as Dave was. I was having tons of issues from daily to crashes where my computer would just shut down entirely at least once a day. I was having issues where my CPU would run at a really low clock speed and everything would be super slow. Anyway, Apple just refused to fix this issue as they couldn't replicate these in the store with their own testing, even though I had sent them countless logs, photos and videos demonstrating these issues happening in real time. My situation was only resolved after I made a video which got more than 350,000 views, which was seen by Apple's executive relations team in the US, and uh, they got in touch and finally sent me a replacement. If I had known about a consumer law rights, all of this would have been sorted in a matter of minutes, rather than it taking almost an entire year and a lot of stress and effort on my end, as well as lost revenue and bad press on Apple's end. So it seems like as long as you are aware of this right and you mention it, you will technically get what is a six year warranty. But if you're not aware of this, then Apple would just not mention this to you at all, as it is not in their interest for people to be aware of this law. But I mean, come on, <laughs> this sounds way too good to be true. There has to be a catch. And uh, you're right, there is one. Quite a few actually. Oh, and by the way, if you're finding this video useful, then definitely consider subscribing as it's free and you'll get to see way more interesting tech videos like this one hopefully is, so uh, thank you. So the biggest catch is that this six year warranty is a UK law only. So it is based on the Consumer Rights Act of 2015 and you need to be in the UK to take advantage of this. But fear not, because even if you are not, you can still take advantage of similar legislation. Every country has a law which states how many years of warranty a consumer should get. For example, in the European Union, every product needs to have a two year warranty at least. But then why do some manufacturers only offer one year even in the European Union? Well, the two year warranty law still has to be respected. So what actually ends up happening in a lot of cases, even with Apple in the EU, is that Apple offers the same one year warranty as everyone else, but then the seller, which could be Amazon or even Apple Direct, needs to offer one year more on top of that for a total of two years. So you usually get one year from the manufacturer and one year from the seller. Now, if you're not sure about the legislation in your own country, just Google consumer law or consumer protection followed by the name of your country. And if you cannot find anything, simply mention consumer law or consumer protection to the seller that you bought the product from to see how they would respond. The second catch is that consumer law applies to the seller and not the manufacturer. Meaning that if you buy your MacBook from a random shop, that shop would be the one responsible for following the law and giving you a free repair or replacement up to six years from when you bought it. Okay, so they follow the law and they give you a free repair or replacement, right? 
Well, in ideal world, yes. But unfortunately, there are some sellers who will straight up refuse to do that. Which means that if a seller says no to your legal rights, your only option is to have them reported to the Trading Standards Authority, which could result in the seller being taken to court. Now, this is a lengthy process, so if the seller says no, it might take months or even years until your case is sorted. But luckily, Apple is actually pretty good with following consumer law, um, as they even have that full website up explaining how it works. But like I said, you have to invoke it yourself, otherwise they would never directly tell you that it exists. And then the third catch is that in order for consumer laws to work, the product needs to have a manufacturer defect. For example, if you spill water onto your MacBook Pro and it breaks, obviously that's your own fault, which would not be covered under either the warranty or consumer law. This is something that would be covered under Apple Care as part of those two accidental damage claims. So there you go. That's pretty much how consumer law works. And uh, this applies to everything, by the way, not just Apple products. So if you bought a microwave from Amazon and it broke, you would have the exact same rights, six years of repairs or replacements, or even refunds in the UK. Anywhere else, you need to make sure that you are aware of your consumer rights. Either look these up yourself or mention them to the seller and legally you would be entitled to them on top of your warranty and uh, Apple Care. But let me know in the comments if you have any stories with any consumer law rights yourself and what is your overall experience with product repairs. Don't forget to check out our Is Apple Too Powerful video where I cover some very interesting facts about Apple, um, and if you have enjoyed this video, I'm very certain that you will enjoy this one as well. And if you have enjoyed this video, then definitely subscribe for more videos like this. This has been Zenoftech, I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.